just record this. Hi everyone, it's February 1st and it's Wednesday and you're here at the DEI badging bi-weekly, not weekly, but bi-weekly. Um, minutes should be in the chat if anybody needs them. Uh, welcome to Josh, who is a, a new face for us. Um, really happy to see you. It's very early for Josh, so thank you. Thank you again for making the effort to be here. I am going to share my screen. There we go. Feel free to leave your name as an attendee if you like. You do not have to do that, though, if you don't want to do that. Um, totally fine. And just to um, reiterate, all of these, um, all of our uh, chaos meetings are part of our code of conduct. So just a reminder to everybody. And also, this meeting is for um, going over our DEI event badging stuff specifically. So, I um, mean, if you have other questions about other things, um, maybe we could talk about that offline um, or on Slack or something. But um, that's kind of the purpose of this meeting. And we just have a lot of new faces, so we're trying to kind of make sure everybody knows why they're here, <laughs> like what's going on. So, so that's the reason I just reiterate all that. Um, okay, let's move my chat over here and let's hop to it. Uh, okay, this is just a quick um, uh, snitching on myself. <laughs> that was an action item from me from last time that I did not do. I'm so sorry. I will absolutely do that this time. We're trying to get um, our badgers all together that work on reviewing all the applications uh, just because we don't do that really. And we would like to start doing that just to make sure they all, everybody feels connected to chaos and knows about any upcoming changes or, um, you know, could give us feedback just, just to connect with them. So I put this at the very top. I, I promise I will do it. <laughs> I promise I will do it. Uh, does anybody have questions about that? Yeah, I, are you going to like ask on the signal what time works or maybe like a doodle -doo poll? Yeah, I think a doodle is the best. That's what we were talking about last time, um, just to find a, a relatively good time for folks to meet. I don't know if we'll find one that works for everybody, but uh, we'll do our best, I think. Yeah, I think, I think maybe like, I have forgotten everything from the last meeting too. <laughs> Forgive you me. You have stuff too? No, no, I, I have forgotten everything from the last meeting, forgive me. So I think, did we say we're going to do that the monthly cadence, like for the... For the Badgers? Yeah, I think yeah. that's what we kind of talked about. Um, I guess that we'll just see if we, if we don't have a time and day that really works for folks. Maybe we'll do like just once a quarter or, you know, something else. Um, I don't know, we can talk about it, but I think we were going to try to do it monthly if we can. I don't know. I hate to add more meetings <laughs> for chaos folks because we already have so many. So I want to be mindful of that as well. But um, is, I, I mean, monthly is not terrible, right? Like, I think monthly is okay. Let me just put that in here. And if we can't, like, maybe we can even also just do uh, a check in on Signal or something async too, if that if that time, you know, if we can't find a time. So. Um, yeah um let me just drop the minutes in here i think we had a few folks join a little bit uh after i posted them so that should be that let's make some more spaces here lammy it's good to see you we haven't seen you in a while i hope you're doing good by the way not to put you on the spot <laughs> not to put your you, know, <laughs> you on the spot but hi <laughs> Hello, Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, you too. You too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, are we good to go? Do we have any other questions about the Badgers? We. I should also say we are probably going to have to expand the team again, maybe sure. over the summer, um, like we did last year. So um, yeah, so just keep an eye out. If you are not a Badger and you're maybe thinking about being a Badger, then just keep that in mind. Okay, so the next item on here is um, welcome to Josh, who has brought this to our attention, and I, I really think this is such a great idea, something we are not currently asking of our events is about their health and safety policies and trying to be as inclusive as possible to folks who, you know, have issues and um, just want to have that information at hand ahead of time. <laughs> and
and also to know that the conference is concerned about that and, and mindful of it and that they have thought about it and they've put a, a policy in place. So um, I would really like to turn it over to you, Josh, not to put you on the spot either. If you don't feel comfortable, that's also fine. Um, but I would love to hear like more about what you're what you're thinking and what your initiatives are. Um, if you want to share with everybody here, we, I'll be super interested to hear. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so please bear with me. No coffee, no caffeine yet. Just waking up here. Um, but thank you so much for for first of all for the work that y'all do. Um, been a huge fan of Chaos's work and uh, really pleased uh, about sort of the standards and the metrics and so much of what 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 y'all do. So thank you for your time. I'll try to keep this on point here. So one thing that I have, uh, so one thing that I do is I do some volunteer event organizing. Done this for meetups, conferences, um, and uh, recently. Uh, uh, campaign organization, and some of this have had, has had to be done in the course of, you know, over the course of the pandemic. So we've just been spending a lot of time thinking about how do we do that in a way that uh, doesn't create more risk than strictly necessary for people. Um, and so we find naturally that depending on the event, the logistics and constraints are always going to be a little different, right? There are some events where uh, we can do pretty well at minimizing risk. There's sometimes when we can't. Um, and so what uh, the work that I and some others have done on this uh, mirrors work that is often done uh, for event accessibility in general. So it is both uh, taking care to look at what are the things that we can do? Okay, let's do those, let's communicate those. What are the things we can't do and let's just be open and honest about those just to be you know real with uh, participants about our um, about our limitations so you know as an example from the world of accessibility uh conference north bay python we used to hold it in a uh in the 1800s uh vaudeville theater and uh it was accessible kind of um, unless you needed to use uh, like a mobility aid, in which case you'd be stuck on like the bottom floor of the place. Um, and so what we did for that is we put together an accessibility guide and said, hey, here's the status of the bathrooms. Here's what we've got for people with visual um, impairments, with hearing impairments. And just really speaking to give attendees the information they need to figure out how to navigate the event uh, without messaging the event organizer <clears throat> feeling like they're trying to ask for special accommodations. Because um, of course, the moment we put people in a position of feeling like they have to ask for special accommodations, they feel like they're in imposition. And that's just, they're not going to do that in many cases. So specific to uh, health and safety, what we've been looking at, um, what I have been working on is something called the Public Health Pledge. And I'll just link it here for, um, I guess I should link it in the doc uh, most usefully. Um, so I've been working on a thing called the Public Health Pledge, which, uh, and I've just added the link to the badging standard for the Public Health Pledge. And folks who've been around for, for a little while, you might remember the Code of Conduct Pledge from the early 20, 2010s, um, where a lot of speakers and event participants were saying, hey, I'm not gonna attend event an event unless it has a code of conduct and an enforcement mechanism. So the public health pledge is exactly like that. And I, I want to be clear, I'm not coming to this group thinking that like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna demand every event, you know, have public sign up to the pledge, et cetera. That's not the focus here. What I noticed uh, the other day was some events uh, getting DEI badges. Um, and then I noticed that some of those events that are getting DEI badges and can be rated pretty highly actually don't speak to any of these issues um, at all, which for me as a person with disabilities, with risk factors, who's been doing advocacy on these subjects, to me, it was a little like, oh shit, how are we saying, how are we saying this event gets a gold medal for DEI if they're not doing anything about uh, accessibility and, and, and health and safety? So, uh, because I know y'all do such great work, I thought, hey, this is an opportunity to get involved and help out. So what you will have seen on that page that I linked 
is really there are five things that we look at uh, to assess how an event is doing on uh, on health and safety policies. Um, it's going to be an evolving standard, but and uh, and there's no expectation that even events that are trying really hard will get flying colors. Um, really, the idea is let's just be real about what's possible for an event. Um, and then let's give attendees that information so that they can make the assessments they need. And hopefully by tying, you know, some of the uh, more proactive measures to say a gold medal or, or one of the higher ratings, try to influence some change in terms of event practice to make them more inclusive. Um, but again, doing this all with an expectation that, hey, nothing's going to be perfect. We're, we're just doing our best. And, you know, here's some guidance to um, give us clear targets. So I think that's kind of a, a maybe a little more than a high level summary. Uh, I'm not sure what process looks like here, but I'm happy to talk about this. Do you know what, what feels natural for, for the group? Yeah, I love this so much. Oh my gosh. This is really great. And yeah, to your point earlier, um, Josh, we don't ask about any of this stuff and we should. I mean, I think that's you're absolutely 100% right. Mm -hmm. What I would love to see is somehow we could, I don't know, I would love to hear what everybody thinks, but I, <laughs> I don't want to like double up, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to duplicate efforts. I would much rather like integrate oh, or... Great. Yeah, sure. point point people to to your work or something like that. So I'd love to hear what others think about this. Yeah, I, I totally do agree. And Josh, this year we've been trying to like improve on our process and you came in at just the right time because um, you know, one of our goals for this year was to kind of like get feedback on the work that we've been doing. And this is the first awesome feedback that we're getting. And like Elizabeth said, um, you've already done like awesome work so I, I do not think we need to like duplicate stuff right and it's like everything they said there is really important and I do not see anything wrong with pointing people there to maybe take the pledge as well um but but, but I think the, what I'm looking at right now or how I see this maybe like a collaboration where um you know uh we can work with you and um, with what you've created and kind of integrate it into because usually the process for event badging is that the applicant will fill in like the form and and then we have our reviewers which is also our badgers that will look through the um what the applicant has filled and then we have a bot that collates that um that result and gives awards the badge so um you know something we could put in is this um the pledge right like looking at the events the applicants maybe do in our application process the applicant looks at the and and you know takes the pledge right looking at um the requirements that are there and takes the pledge and that's that would all would also integrate that into how the bot kind of like calculates the badge, right? And um, like, which is really, really important. So I think this is how I look at it. And it's something that I feel we would 100% want to do. But, but then, then the question is, um, so how do we say, for example, I think where we might have um, some not issues, but where we might have to look at the process again is, for example, I have, um, Elizabeth, can you go back to that list again? Um, yes, in the case where I have um, maybe Max and like, I have two of these criteria, right? Um, if we implement, if we integrate taking the pledge, right? If the, the applicant or the event organizer has just two of this, how do we kind of like, you know, review that because like right. do they still take the the pledge even when they have two of this criteria right because we want to encourage them you know usually in the applicant 
process um sometimes the the applicants um, the applicants ticks out do not fill in some information and then the reviewers ask um you didn't fill in this like do you um have a process that you know that you go for this since you didn't tick that you do this right and then we've seen cases where some organizers go back and kind of take some time to implement that so I think where we might have to look at the process again is in the case where an event does not have some of the criteria how do we encourage them because I don't want to use the word force them or like ignore it how do we encourage them to say okay these are things you're lacking like you could you know, improve on this and, you know, move a little bit up the badge, right? So, yeah, that was a lot of explanations, but I hope that's cool. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm, uh, it makes a lot of sense to me and, and thank you so much. I, I really, I like the idea of, actually, let me, let me, let me respond to the question in there. Um, the question of, so when, Similar to the uh, badging effort here, um, this is going to be sort of a self a self assessment that uh, event organizers take, and we're going to be building out an organizer guide, um, sort of structured around this, um, which will start with a seed. But you know, the idea is to build it into something fairly robust that can speak to organizers in a lot of different contexts, so that we're giving them we're not only sort of pointing the way to like, hey, this is what you should do, uh, but also help them figure out like, well, what's, how, how do I do that? Because uh, it's it's not, it's not, it's not trivial. Um, the expectation with these is that even events that are, that like really care, really are trying, uh, they, they might not, uh, they might get a mixed grade on these. So, um, so one point of difference here is that the uh, this badging standard uh, is not going to produce a single sort of result like a, a you know a, you know gold silver or or, or analogous. Um, so for instance, just to take some real world like examples, uh, Fosdem has, uh, Fosdem does not do well on any of this. Uh, as much as I deeply love that event, uh, it has put zero effort into any of these things. So it, it would get a no policy rating on all five, um, on all five um, options, except for maybe ventilation, uh, but that, that depends on the dev room. Um, so that's an example of FOSM. Taking a, another example, if we look at say RubyConf or PyCon US, um, where I know that they've got They've got, they're doing well on masks, on vac vaccines, uh, ventilation, they're making some efforts, alternatives, they're making some efforts, tests, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't know if they're going to have any testing. So even event that's trying pretty hard and doing good work, you know, they're going to get one grade on testing at least that's like, well, it's just not there. Um, and, and so one of the things as a result of that, that we want to communicate around this is hey, it's not bad to have a mixed set of grades. The, the most important thing is that we're doing the evaluation so that people have the information to, uh, to, to make decisions based off of. Uh, speaking more to how we might integrate, uh, love the way you're thinking there, Ruth. Uh, I would be deeply grateful if there was sort of a link to the pledge and maybe an encouragement for people to uh, to sign on board, I, that would be huge. Um, and then, what I would what I would love to see, and I don't know how realistic this is, but as far as I understand how this badging initiative works, what I would love to see is, um, you know, having done this public health pledge self assessment as sort of a requirement in getting badged. Um, so like they've done the work to share the information at least, and then maybe some level of like, you know, do they do well in this assessment or not? And that might be a factor in, I think you you said this yourself, in what the score ends up being to get, you know, is, is this a gold medal? Is this something else? 
Um, but th okay. that certainly seems fairly intuitive, if I understand correctly. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, something I just thought about also is maybe, maybe this like in the future, maybe not right now is while we have reviewers since like um you I'm I'm sure you have like it seem as well that you work with on like the um public health badge maybe we could have one person also look at because um look look at like the um their pledge as well and give us feedback on the event badging part i don't know if that makes sense because um would would want to would want to see that um you know they are making progress with it so maybe we can also work with on the reviews on each of like the applicants reviews we can also work with someone from your team someone come like volunteer from your team as well to look at and give us feedback or give our reviewers feedback um because we we don't want like for our reviewers to feel that this is like an extra thing that they have to do as well right yeah i was gonna ask josh do you keep a list of what people who have applied for badges like what they got do you keep a list so that like that way our reviewers could just reference your list to just verify so we we uh we just launched the badging standard uh on monday so we don't have that yet okay uh, but yes, the, the idea is to keep a, a running log of like, hey, here are the self-assessments that event organizers have done. Uh, we'd gladly make that available. And um, and also, I should say, I'm looking at the badging sign-up form over here, because uh, I, I would love to to, uh, to help out with, with some of that work. Yeah, we're currently in the process of reworking that whole flow. We're doing a whole new badging website um, with a new application, so it would be a little bit easier. Um, Anita, go for it. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I was thinking that maybe while the applicants are doing the DEI badge, applying for the DEI badge, we get to the point where they ask for health and safety. So if they're not aware of it, they get prompted to like follow through, but if they have, if they are and they've gone through the process, then we ask them the badge they got. I had yeah, so they can just tell us the badge they got, and then we reach out back to Josh to confirm the badges and move on with the process. Yeah, I like that a lot. So we would have like a section and then ask them about their badge on each one of those five points, and. And like maybe to uh, maybe to Josh's point earlier, or Ruth's point, I don't remember. Sorry, <laughs> somebody mentioned that we like they can't just get a no policy on all five, even though they went through the badge process. Um, like maybe we would have some kind of criteria, and then if they have if they can't, and I personally think if they if they don't have anything in this section, even if they have enough other things that they're doing. Like this should maybe be a requirement for a gold badge. Like even if you did everything else right and technically like when we add it up, you would get the gold badge. But I feel like this might have to be a requirement to get that gold badge. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this is really, really awesome, Josh. Thank you so much. I'm actually really excited about that, um, this whole uh, initiative that you're launching. Um, and I'm really happy that you came to us to see how we can work together and, and make this um, a, a, a thing. Uh, I have a question for another question for the group. And um, to someone's question earlier, yes, we, we should talk about this in our larger DEI group, which it does meet later today. So we will definitely put that on the agenda for sure. Um, one thing I want to also ask the group is do, or maybe this is a, group, a call for the DEI group, I don't know. Um, do we need a new metric around this or is it enough to just point to Josh's work? What do you all think? Well, this would make a good metric, though. Just to add it amongst our metric, because we don't have one that 
tracks health and safety so far. Agreed. I, I think it's a good candidate for, for a new metric, for sure. And then, you know, as we might lean on Josh a little bit to, to uh, inform us when the their project evolves and they're adding new things or or um, just kind of shifting or evolving that their criteria and their um, perspective on things, we could then also take that information and put it in this metric for for everyone else too. If Josh would be <laughs> if Josh would be okay with that, with like helping us out with, you know, just to keep that metric updated. Awesome. Yeah, happy to. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, fantastic. Yes, I love this so much. Um, let's just mark here on the issue that um, we do want to. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Great conversation today in the DPI event as we um, meeting. We will discuss more at the DPI. And then whatever we kind of decide out, we can also um, come in it here as well, just for a little more visibility for folks. So, because sometimes things get lost in minutes, <laughs> buried deep in the, <laughs> in the hole of the minutes. Um, uh, and as an aside, that was another action item I was supposed to do and I did not do, which was to archive the old minutes. So apologies. Uh, yeah, I'll get to it. I promise. <laughs> I promise. So, okay. Uh, yes, and also, yes, uh, just for those who don't know, we are launching our discourse today. Um, after the meetings are over, we'll, we'll send a message out to everybody on how to join and where to start. So, yes, that's a perfect, this is a perfect topic to put out there because it's a, it's a very important topic and we want to include as many people in this conversation as possible. Slack is maybe not great for this kind of stuff. And this is a perfect example of what where discourse can keep this thread a little uh, easier to find and it's it's like longer term so yes agree 100 percent um awesome okay cool thanks josh um do we have any final kind of comments about this before we move on to just looking at our goals for next year And just to reiterate, so right now we're gonna actually we should have like an action item for the group here. Let's make a new metric and also um, add this as a question as a section on the application. Okay, so that work is going to Enoch. Enoch is no longer here. I don't know drag him. Well. <laughs> oh, he was here. Did he leave? Okay. Yeah, he's no longer here. We also do have uh, so a few outstanding questions about accessibility, Josh, your point earlier, that have been kind of in this pending um, space while we are reworking the website and reworking the application. So now that we have this also to add, um, maybe we just add it. <laughs> maybe we just add it to the application we have now and then port it over when it's ready. What do you all think? Yeah, I agree, Ruth. Um, I'm just also gonna put this uh, as another, just kind of. Uh, I think I can. I think I can do that. I, I know the process to add stuff to that application is is really janky. It's not. It's not smooth at all because it's like pulling from WordPress and pulling from GitHub and yeah. So I will. I will look at that. I'll put that as an action item for me. Um, look at how to add this section and my section on accessibility oops okay perfect okay any other final comments before we go on okay thank you again josh this is awesome i uh, love it so much Okay, so last time we were looking at some goals, or we thought of some goals for 2023. Um, I just want to bring these up again. Do, oops, 
do we think these are too many? <laughs> it seems like a lot, but maybe it's not. Maybe we can do it. I don't know. We have already started one, so we are awesome like that. <laughs> so we can do it. Yeah, yeah. This seems, yeah. It seems like a lot, but actually, you know, like this. So if if I'm already going to change this form to add these new questions, I can just make that change. Um, yeah, so just for those who don't know, um, right now this process is very transparent. It all happens on GitHub. Um, but that being said, we have we ask for very limited information from the organizers. And so we don't even like have their email. So we don't have a great way, like GitHub is the only way we can really interact with folks and get feedback and such. And we've not had a great response to that in the past when we've kind of just put a issue out there and then pinged everybody and their brother and tried to get their feedback through the issue. So um, we're gonna start asking for their email address, but it will go on the GitHub issue, as far as I know. So I don't know how people feel about that. Like maybe they don't want it out there on GitHub, you know? That's kind of kind of personal information. I wonder if there's I wonder if there's a way, uh, this is a question for Enoch, if we can capture yeah. that information but not post it on the GitHub yeah, issue. Sure. Yeah, maybe Enoch would help with that, like just capture that information but not put it on the issue. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, this right here, starting a group for event organizers, I think uh, has been very well received. I think Matt is like, absolutely, we are, we're going to do that. <laughs> so I think that that's going to just, um, <laughs> that, that will happen. Um, oh, thank you, Ruth. I, I have this clicky keyboard, which is super annoying, but my son is a gamer and he gave it to me. Uh, it's a it's a hand me down from him. He got a way cooler one, so I got this one. It's like lights up purple and pink and all that stuff. <laughs> so yes, go mom. But um, yeah, I most of it's like typos. But thank you. <laughs> I, I also did play piano, so I don't know if that matters. But anyway, I digress. Um, so I think <laughs> back to the goals. Sorry, sorry everyone. Back to the goals. Uh, <laughs> Um, we uh, are probably, no, we are definitely going to do this. I think it's it's pretty, and I think that we'll bring this up again at the DEI meeting as well. Um, but yeah. Um, yes, new update of application to include new metrics. We are going to do that. The new website, we are going to do that. I mean, yeah, we're going to do all these things. So, okay. Hang on tight. Because <laughs> 2023 is going to be a busy year. It'll be good. It'll be good. Uh, we have a little bit of time if anybody has I think we have like 10 minutes left if anybody has any any final we are awesome Ruth yay we are Ruth says we are awesome um maybe we should put that as a goal we're just going to be awesome all year we're not going to stop doing that so uh, I'm going to stop my sharing my screen <laughs> is there uh what else do we need to chat about what else is on your all's minds Anything before we head out? One question for me, just to double check uh, on the timing of the DEI meeting. That's in an hour, two hours. What time is that? That is a great question. You would think I would know off the top <laughs> of my head, but I don't. Uh, it is at, oh. It is at um, 11 my time, so 10 a.m. U.S. Central Chicago time. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Soon. It's in 48 minutes. Yeah. Perfect. And see. then, not that you, I mean, we just want you to stay with us all day, Josh, because after that, right after that, at noon, we're having um, an onboarding to chaos meeting for newcomers, where Ruth and I, um, just kind of go over like all the moving parts of chaos and what's going on here. So you are welcome to stick around for that. If if you have time, if you want, you can also watch an older one. We record them, so you could also just go watch an old one if you want. Um, but yeah, that's happening also. 
conveniently, the schedule is wide open today. So uh, awesome. I think yes. I'll be seeing a lot of y'all today. Uh, <laughs> so the next yes. one is in a little bit, and then the other one immediately follows that. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, it does. It does. And it's just for newcomers. Um, and we do one uh, the first Wednesday of the month. We do we do this. So um, if you if you do change your mind and need an app, <laughs> that's totally <laughs> fine. That's completely valid. We'll do it again, or you can watch an old one. So. Awesome. And that's that's uh, the same Zoom link. It is. Yep. Perfect. Yep. 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 You could just stay logged in all day if you want. That, that also is valid. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Well, thanks again for for you know hanging out with us. And Katie, good luck to you in Texas um, and getting it through this winter storm. We're thinking of you. If you need anything, just holler at us. You know how to how to get us. So just reach out on Slack or something. Okay. Sending you good vibes. Yeah, well, 